In today's video, we're going to be looking at absolute uncertainties. What are they? What are some examples of them? And we'll also be looking at percentage uncertainties and some further examples. Okay, well, let's start looking at absolute uncertainties in a little bit more detail. The first question that we need to answer is what are absolute uncertainties? Absolute uncertainties are the inherent uncertainties in any instruments of measurement. For instance, if I had a standard centimeter ruler, the smallest measurement that I can do with that ruler is one millimeter. So as an example, I'm going to provide a standard ruler and my smallest measurement is plus or minus one millimeter. Now this is often taken to be the absolute uncertainty of that instrument, the smallest measurement that you can take. Just a little disclaimer here, this is normally the case in A-level physics. You may come across the convention in universities and in research, so I'm just going to write this in a different color in brackets, that the absolute uncertainty is actually half of the smallest measurement that you can make. So plus or minus half a millimeter. However, for the purposes of A-level physics and the exams, we're just going to assume that it's the smallest measurement that we can perform with that instrument. Let's have a look at an example. Imagine that we have measured this uh, length here on the left hand side to be 11 centimeters. And we've done this with a standard centimeter ruler. So if you have just a standard ruler, what I want you to do is just pick it up and have a look at the smallest measurement that you can take. Chances are this measurement is one millimeter. This is our absolute uncertainty in this measurement. We can write down this measurement as 11 centimeters plus or minus one millimeter. So that actually means that in practice, we're not really certain about this last digit here. It could be 11.1 or it could be 10.9. It's somewhere within that range of between 10.9 and 11.1 centimeters. It is good practice to write these in the same unit. So if we convert both our measurement and our absolute uncertainty to meters, we can just write the following measurement as 0 0.110 meters plus or minus 0 0.001 meters. Okay, well, now let's have a look at a different example, and those are digital instruments. So if we have a digital instrument, for example, it could be a top and balance, the rules are very, very similar, but let's go over them. As an example of a digital instrument, I've drawn here a reading. Let's imagine that this is a reading from a top hand balance. In practice, it could be a reading of any digital instruments. It could be a stop clock, it could be an ammeter, a voltmeter, etc. etc. Now, the rule is that the absolute uncertainty in this instrument is plus or minus one of the smallest measurable digit. In practice, this simply means that we don't really trust the last value. We're not really sure whether this reading is 52.763 grams or whether it's 52.764 or whether it also could be 52.762. So the way we're going to write the uncertainty in our reading is simply 
grams plus or minus 0 0.001 grams. Folks, now let's have a look at the different type of uncertainties known as percentage uncertainties. The formula for percentage uncertainty is as follows. If you wanted to calculate it, it's plus or minus your absolute uncertainty divided by our measurement or our measurement value, we can also call it. And because we want this expressed as a percentage, we just need to multiply this by 100. Well, let's have a look at an example of percentage uncertainty. Shall we do one of the examples that we calculated just above? For example, we took a measurement with a ruler to be 11 centimeters with uncertainty of plus or minus one millimeter. Let's calculate the percentage uncertainty for this example. The first step is just going to be to write down our formula, especially as we've only just learned it. So it's your percentage uncertainty. I've just written it as PU in this case is plus or minus your absolute uncertainty. So I'm going to write this as a U in this case divided by our measurement. And all of this is multiplied by 100. Okay, well, in this case, our absolute uncertainty in meters is plus or minus 0 0.001. And the measurement which we've taken is 11 centimeters, which in meters is 0 0.110. Now notice that I've kept the units the same both at the top and at the bottom for consistency. Let's time this by 100. And if we put this into a scientific calculator, we're going to get approximately 0.9%. So the percentage uncertainty in this example when we've measured something with a meat ruler is, uh, is actually very, very small. Okay, well, let's have a look at another example, which will hopefully help us explain why is percentage uncertainty so important. Well, I've written these down over here, so let's have a look. Calculate the percentage uncertainty in those cases. And I've two separate cases. Both of these measurements have been taken with exactly the same ruler. One of them is four millimeters plus or minus one millimeter. The other one is 1.6 meters plus or minus one millimeter. Okay, well, let's calculate both of those percentage uncertainties just here on the side. So remember, our percentage uncertainty is plus or minus our absolute uncertainty, which in this case is just one millimeter divided by four millimeters. Of course, I could convert those to, to meters. It's not really necessary because the 10 to the power of minus three will cancel out on both sides of the fraction. And uh, straight after that, all I need to do is multiply this by 100. So if we put that into a scientific calculator, we can just even calculate that going to be 0 0.25 multiplied by 100, which is about 25%. So this is actually a very high percentage uncertainty. Now, let's have a look at another example. So if you measure a larger distance, so 1.6 meters plus or minus one millimeter, let's calculate the percentage uncertainty in this case. Now, this will now be plus or minus one millimeter, so one times 10 to the power of minus three. I'm including the 10 to the power of minus three now because the top and the bottom have different units. So I'm just gonna write everything out in the same unit in meters in this case, divided by 1.6. And then all of this is multiplied by 100. In this case, the percentage uncertainty 
is going to be a lot smaller because we have a much larger measurement with the same instrument. And indeed, the percentage uncertainty is 0.0625%. So this is almost negligible. In fact, we can see that one way of decreasing the percentage uncertainty in our experiments is to increase our measurement values. And this is, uh, this is done quite a lot. For example, if you were to time a time period, of something with a pretty small time period, let's say half a second, you're far more likely to make a mistake if you're trying to time just one time period compared to if you were trying to time, let's say, 20 time periods, then divide that result by 20. Folks, now I've given you quite a lot of information today, but some of the absolute musts of what we should remember. Number one, absolute uncertainty is the smallest measurement that we can measure from that instrument. For instance, um, if we have a ruler, the smallest measurement could be one millimeter. If that's the case, our absolute uncertainty is going to be plus or minus one millimeter. Our percentage certainty is plus or minus our absolute uncertainty divided by a measurement times 100. If you have any questions, if you're a little bit uncertain about those uncertainties, feel free to drop a comment down below.